Welcome back, Advanced Algebra 2 Wildcats. So if you would, pause again and update your table of contents. Okay, you paused, you updated. So now we're looking at Wednesday, August 31st, Family of Functions Foldable. It's going to be a foldable of fun. Now that's going to be in Section 5, and we'll come back to the journal once the foldable is done and attach it. Okay, so let's get started. Now, you're going to need five half sheets of paper. Okay. Now I have colors. You don't technically if you're at home need colors, but it will be helpful. Okay. Now it's cut this way. So it's kind of give you an idea. Here's the paper. It should look kind of like that. Okay. So take a piece of paper, fold it in half and cut. You should have five of those. Now, once you do that, then you line them up about a half an inch apart. So half an inch is a, a probably a good distance. Okay. Okay. So now that you have that, you're going to take it and fold it like that. So see how the other section is like that. Now, this section should be, should be here. Now, crease the top. Take a stapler. Staple the top. Okay, so now you have a staple. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten taps. Okay, now if you would close your eyes and magically. Now I'm serious, close your eyes. All right, keep them closed. Now open them. Poof, like magic. The foldable is complete, and so now you can complete yours. Okay, so parent functions. That's your title. That's your section. Now open that. Okay, so remember, parent function. We're talking about parent functions, okay? All right, so the linear parent function goes to the origin and looks like this. Now, we know it's a linear parent function because if you look at the table of the linear parent function, the first difference in the y values is the same. And we know that the domain is all real numbers and the range is all real numbers. Now, the quadratic parent function it touches the origin here. And the second difference of the y, and you might write that first difference, second difference, is the same. Okay? The domain is all real numbers and the range is y greater than or equal to 0. Now, the cubic parent function... We know it's a cubic parent function because the third difference, so first, second, third, the third difference is the same in the y values. The domain is all real numbers. The range is all real numbers. Okay. The exponential parent function doesn't actually touch or go through the origin, and it has an asymptote of y equals 0. And the domain is all real numbers, and the range is y greater than 0. Now, the exponential doesn't have any first difference, second difference. You look at the common ratio and the y values. And so if you take 0.5 divided by 0.25, you'll get 2. And if you take 1 divided by 0.5, you'll get 2. And 2 divided by 1, you'll get 2. So the common ratios are the same in the y value. Now, the logarithmic parent function doesn't go through or touch the origin, but it has an S asymptote at x equals 0, okay? The domain is x greater than 0, and the range is all real numbers. And here, we know it's a logarithmic parent function because if you take the x values, the common ratios of them will be the same. Okay. Next up, cube root. Now, we know it's a cube root parent function because the third difference in the x is the same. It goes to the origin. And the domain is all our numbers, and the range is all our numbers. Okay, so now we're looking at the square root parent function. Okay, so now the square root parent function we know is a parent is square root because the second difference in the x's are the same, and we know that domain is 
x greater than or equal to 0, the range of y greater than or equal to 0, and it touches the origin. Okay. And so we're going to have to slide it down to see it this way. Okay. So here we know I've separated the last two as absolute value and rational. So absolute value is on the left, and we know it's an absolute value parent function because the first difference in y is the same. And we know that the parent function goes to the origin and the domain, or touches the origin, say, and domain is all our numbers and the range is y greater than or equal to zero. Now, the rational function doesn't actually touch or go to the origin and the domain is all our numbers x greater than zero. Say, let me say that, hold on, almost made a mistake here. Forget the last second of this video. The domain is all our numbers. X does not equal zero. Let me say it again. The domain is range. All our numbers. X does not equal zero. And the range is all our numbers. Y does not equal zero. And so that's the rational parent function. All right. And let's look here. Now, it says to find an inverse. Now, why the colors are important is because the colors are inverses of each other. So the reds are inverses of each other. The purples are inverses of each other. The blues here are, are inverses of each other. So if you use colored papers and different ones each, you'll see that the colors line up to be inverses of each other. Okay, so to find an inverse. To graphically find the inverse, you reflect over the y equals x line, f of x equals x. Okay? And to test that, you use the horizontal line test. Algebraically, you switch the x and y values and we solve for y. Or you use composition of functions to determine the inverse. So f inverse of x, and that's here, and f inverse of f of x. Okay, and the domain and range will flip, so that's important. Okay, that's a key concept. If they're inverses of each other, the domain and ranges will flip. Okay, and so there's some information on inverse of functions. Okay, this concludes the families of function foldable. Hopefully, it was a whole lot of foldable fun for you, and have a foldable Wildcat day.